So finally, Monday afternoon, I watched this show, and it was good. It was not the greatest show I ever saw. I mean, there's stuff I question, which I'll get into here in a moment, by the way. But it was, an, as Dave likes to say, it was easy to watch. Sasha Bailey was really good. Jey Uso is awesome. Roman Reigns is awesome. Paul Heyman is awesome. Baron Corbin and Rey Mysterio was insufferable. Dave goes, I never get bored watching a Rey Mysterio match. And I was thinking, that wasn't even a Rey Mysterio match. It was a Corbin match. All the guy did was sell for like 30 minutes. But anyway, rating comes in, the final rating, because everyone, there's all these trolls on the internet. I'm not sure you're aware of this or not, but I can't tweet anything over the weekend without some dude going, what's the SmackDown number? Well, bro, I don't do the SmackDown number on the weekend anymore because it's the overnight number. And quite frankly, if you're a big fan of WWE, what you should want is for me not to tweet that number because the final number is always higher. So I'm doing you, the WWE fans, a favor by not tweeting the lower number of the two. So anyway, the number comes in, the final number, 2.315 million viewers. That is a very good number. And it's exactly what I was talking about for weeks now. All you need is a couple of things that are hot. And you can carry an entire show. Like, there's stuff on SmackDown that I think is dumb. But you know what? I will tune into SmackDown every week to watch Roman Reigns and Jey Uso and Paul Heyman. And as dumb as the stuff was, the Corbin match was insufferable, but at least, like, there's a storyline here with the Mysterio family and Buddy Murphy and Seth Rollins. Now, the downside is that Sasha and Bailey is an anchor on the show. It's carrying the show. And it seems to me that for whatever reason, they decided after trying for three years, we're going to blow it off as quickly as possible, break up the team, do two matches, and move on with our lives. I presume at some point they're going to go back to it, but... We have now gone from Bailey and Sasha as the best women's tag team champions, and actually the best of any tag team champions in WWE. They've been in forever. We have broken them up. We have feuded them. And now it's Sasha Banks versus Carmella, who attacks Sasha with the only move she ever does, the super kick. She does more super kicks than the Young Bucks. And if the Young Bucks and the Usos had a tag match together, there would be less super kicks in that match than Carmella is going to throw in any given match with Sasha Banks. But we're moving on to that now. I don't know why. But people sure love this show. And the 2.315 million, a lot of that was Sasha and Bailey. They did a huge number. And then the show fell off a cliff. And now we're moving away from it. So things aren't perfect, but that's a good number. And I sure like SmackDown a lot more than Raw. Did you watch this SmackDown show, Mike? What did you think? I still haven't seen it yet. No! Like I, I was still all Disgusted. backed up. Well, look, I wasn't going to watch it yesterday, and I am going to watch it. You've maybe been backed I'll watch up it. many times. You still watch shows. <laughs> I will be. Maybe I will take my seat on that throne to watch this show uh, like I do Raw sometimes. But no, I mean, from what you made it sound like, it, it wasn't that bad. And, and like I said yesterday... I'll end up watching it before the next one, but there was so much stuff going on that it just, I, I've missed it. And the same thing goes for the countdown to full gear because those numbers came out as well. And I think much like me, there were other things going on that dragged people's attention away from it. Their demo uh, still stayed relatively strong, 18 to 34, but that was down pretty significantly too. So I will have to play catch up with those shows again from what you've made it sound like. You're already telling me what I already know, which is their top three storylines have been, you know, really good. Unfortunately, we're losing one now when it comes to Sasha and Bailey. But here's my hope for that one. When they do come back to it, it's not as partners first. Like they both get beat up and then they back into each other and see each other in the back and they're holding their necks and then they look up and then they become team members again just to get split up again. I, they have messed that up from day one they messed up bailey from day one but that's a completely different story but yeah but you, you know what? probably let me but say you shouldn't something be about surprised bailey. at the trajectory you can be disappointed but you can't be surprised this is what they do dude they've messed up bailey's character but let me tell you something she is so good in the ring absolutely and sasha banks is so good in the ring and this is what i want to say about this because we talked about this a little bit yesterday they gutted the live events division Tony Chimmel fired. Like a dozen people involved in live events were all fired. 
which tells me that a there's no plan to do live touring anytime soon. There was good vi- there was good uh, uh, vaccine news yesterday, but we're still a ways away from going back to normal. But I don't think that even when we go back to normal, there's going to be house shows to any real degree. And also, I think it's abundantly clear when I watched that SmackDown show last night and Raw on Monday, Sasha and Bailey, they had such a great match. And then later on SmackDown, they had another women's match. And then on Raw Monday, we had that Nia Jax match with Lana. And we got Mandy out there and Dana. And Mandy's supposed to catch somebody on a dive. And, like, she did everything in her power to not get near that person on the dive. Like, she didn't even try to catch them. And then she fell down anyway. And the Lana Naya match was, like, I mean, it was only a minute and it was a squash, but it was still horrendous. And the point of all of this is, there is such a magnificent difference between Bailey and Sasha and many of the other women on this roster. And you know what the big one of the big differences is? Well, Bailey and Sasha were out there, and they busted their ass on the independent scene... And they worked all over the place. And then contrast that with these women that they just got signed for whatever reason. Rock's cousin, really good looking. And they go through this performance center. And these matches, it's not, it's like, it's like when we talk about pro wrestling versus sports entertainment. It's like they're not even doing the same thing. Sasha and Bailey, what they're doing, it's not even the same universe as to what like Naya and, and these other women are doing. It's, it's such a shocking contrast. And if the day comes where there's no more house shows and they're not grabbing all of these women off the indies, they're busy just hiring good-looking people and putting them through the performance center, I mean, this gap is only going to widen. And one day when the Sashas and Baileys are gone, that ain't going to be a fun day for women's wrestling in WWE. So you're saying you don't want to see Lacey Evans and Carmella do a 60-minute Broadway? Oh, my God. Look, I'm just, I'm going to try, I'm t- going to try here because, again, Bianca Belair's over there. What else do you do with her right now unless you're going to mix her up in a bunch of nonsense in a in a mixed storyline of teams of, you know, uh, uh, you know, unwilling partners or whatever it is. I mean, to me, at least if you're going to make this move and we'll see what they do, you have Bailey and Bianca on a silver platter for yourselves as another women's storyline on that show. And I think it's a valuable one for both of them. So maybe, maybe if there's a silver lining in the, in that black cloud, that maybe that's actually what it ends up being here. But yeah, I mean, Sasha and Bailey, they, you know, they've never really gotten it in the same way that their fans have actually gotten it when it comes to those two. But We'll see how the whole thing ends up playing out. Once again, though, I don't want to see them end up as partners again anytime soon, ever, in fact, you know, for for a long, long time. Don't become partners again. At least keep them as rivals. If you're a big fan of these video clips here on YouTube, you're missing out on full-length shows. Down there on the bottom right-hand side of the screen, click that Join button, and when you sign up, you'll have full access to all of the shows that we've got up on YouTube, over 300 at current count. Wrestling Observer Live, The Brian and Vinny Show, and Figure Four Daily with Filthy Tom Lawler and Lance Storm. Hit the join button, sign up today. You can also click subscribe, and you'll always be alerted as to when new shows and clips are available.